an appointment. And he called me on the phone and said he wanted to come to church. And I said, okay. And he said, will you, will you come get me? He was in a halfway house. He had been in prison for a number of years. And I went and started picking him up every Sunday. And we started a church in Hialeah off of him. Then the church grew and became a good church. And then the devil got in it. And they started trying to say that the uh, Valera Bible was, as, was equal or better than the King James. And I can't fellowship with that. And it's killing me and it's breaking my heart that I can't have fellowship with a church that I spent that much effort and time in. And I sit with two of them men in my office and told them about themselves. We used to have a church that we associated with that was in uh, Arcadia called Kingsway Baptist Church. And the three churches associated with each other and any time one of us had something going on yep. the other two drove to that church Amen. didn't matter whether it was to Miami or Arcadia to Pokey we all met and we're trying to get that now Rich and I started with you and I and I've got to get my people I've got a lot of some older people and I've got to figure out a way either to get a van or do something to where I can Somebody can drive for all of us and get us down here. And get get us down here when y'all have something. And we're going to work on that and we're going to try to get that done. Because it'd be good for us just as like it's good for you. And we all get together. We may not be big, but, you know, we don't have to be big. You know, when, when we all get together, we look a little bit bigger, you know. Even though we're not big, we look a little bigger. It makes you feel good when you got to get out more chairs. Yeah. You, know? Yeah. you know, so it, it, that's going on. I mean, we, it takes going to take prayer though. Yeah. So we all need to be praying about it. But it's possible. It's possible. Rich and I have seen it before. Brad has yeah. seen it before. Yeah. Brad is Brad is my arms. He's been with me for thirty-one years. And he lives with me and my wife. He's like a, a son to me. Amen. I mean, we, we look at him as our son, although he's not. He's not any kin at all. But don't talk about him. We can talk about him, but don't you talk about him. <laughs> but I want to close with something. I want you to go to First Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to get somebody to read for me because I messed up and I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, charge my tablet up or I would try to read this myself but I'm going to get somebody to read for me Manny's going to read for me tonight uh, remember when you was a little kid growing up how many remember when your daddy or your mama used to say this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you <laughs> remember those days remember that Brad hand me that water from over there okay. I have a backup battery here for your tablet if you want to no 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 that's fine Okay, it's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you have you ever thought about how it hurts God when we sin? Yeah. Amen. Now you've had all kind of good preaching all, all, all weekend. And all weekend I've been wanting to beat and feed to want to preach this message. And God ain't letting me preach it. And I, he's letting me preach it tonight. And I know why. And it's a good one to close with. And, it, and I hope it'll make you think and me think. Because what it, what it involves is a communication problem. We're, we're selfish. Yeah. Every stinking one of us, we're selfish. Yeah, yeah. Every, uh, me, 
My mm -hmm. wife, uh, Rich, Jessica, yeah. every boy, every one of us in this room is selfish. Amen. You can sit there and tell you tell me that you're not, but you're lying to yourself. Yeah. Okay. All right. The 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 thing that you need to understand, okay, is that we all have communication problems. Okay? And the, the, the hard thing is to have, is to, to get get yourself to where you realize that you don't you have a communication problem with God. Mm -hmm. Your answers about you and God are in the Bible, but if you don't study the Bible and you don't read the Bible, you don't you don't understand how God feels about subjects. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to read the first the first three verses. I right, Manny. Go ahead. 1 through 3, 15, 1 through 3. Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Okay. When I was in the Air Force, and I had five men working for me, this one one man came to me, and he had went to sick call, and he had a paper from sick call that stated that he would be put on quarters for 24 hours and so I took the paper and read it to him and read what it said and said now do you understand what this says and he says yes sir I says it says you're to go to the barracks because he's a single guy and you're to stay in the barracks except to go to the chow hall to eat until tomorrow morning and then you're to report back to to a sick call and to be reevaluated, and if they think you stay need to stay in the barracks another 24 hours, they'll give you another excuse, uh, duty excuse, and you're to bring it to me, and and then go back to the barracks and stay there again for 24 hours. I said, "Do you understand that?" "Yes, sir, I understand that." And he signed it, and I signed it, and so that afternoon I had to do some business in downtown Columbus, Mississippi where I was stationed. And I'm walking back to the car from what I had to do, and lo and behold, here he comes with his girlfriend. You know, that's about like somebody that calls you when you got church and said, Preacher, I'm not going to be there today. I think I'm going to get a headache. You know, and then I tell them, well, you have a good time shopping today, you know. Because they're going, you know they've got, got something in mind other than church, you know. And so I hollered him, hey, come here, McDonald. And boy, when he seen me, man, his <laughs> eyes got about that big around. He came over to me. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm headed back to the office, and you better beat me there. Hmm. And he got back to the office, and man, I reamed his hide and sent him, told him to go back to the barracks, and I, I made sure he went back because I went back with him. But then he got in trouble for that. Well, when the Lord does something with us and does, says something to us, the problem of it is a lot of times we don't listen. Now, the, the uh, Bible, now look at Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Why, and why call ye, ye me Lord, and Lord, uh, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the thing, and, and uh, do not the things which I say? Good question. 
And why, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Now, that's a good question. You know what I'm saying? Why do you? Okay? Why do you do those things? Why do you call him Lord, Lord, and then you don't listen to him? We do that. We do that with our parents. We even do that with our parents when we're growing. You know, sometimes we don't want to. We don't want to ask dad or mom, even though because they're older than us, we don't even want, we don't want to ask them because we're worried about what they might say to us. You know that you already know the answer, and you don't want to get the answer they're going to give you. You know, Jesus said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." I know we're not saved by keeping the commandments. But we're supposed to. We're supposed to not try to sin. We're supposed to fight sin. I know that we're not saved by works. I understand that. You know? I mean, when I was a child growing up, I mean, I got a whipping every day. I had five sisters and no brothers. And I was the oldest. I mean, you know? Them girls was always lying on me. You know, I, I had five to one. I mean, come on, man. You know, they were always picking on me. You know. All right, now I want you to look at your back. Go back to 1 Samuel 15. We'll be in 1 Samuel 15 probably the rest of the way through. And go back to 1 Samuel 15. Now, the first point is, now I'm not going to write it on the board, but the first point is, okay, the instruction. The first point is the instructions. Okay? Now, I want you to, you, we've already read them. I want you to look at verse 3 and read it to yourself. Now, I read, now look at it and read it to yourself. It's important that you read it to yourself. Do you have an actual cough drop? Yes, sir. Read it to yourself. You read it? Amen. Everybody read it? Yes, sir. Okay, now let me ask you a question. You understand it? Yes, sir. Any, anybody, anybody have any difficulties with it? Is that, is that what I, okay, anybody have any difficulties with it? You understand it, don't you? Yeah. Okay, you have no problems with it, right? Okay. So if, so if the Lord told you to do that, you'd know exactly what you're supposed to do, wouldn't you? All right, take your Bible and go turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, whole, 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 whole 1 Samuel 15. Thanks, brother. Oh, that's really cold, all right, man, yeah. All right, go to, go to, go to, go to Ephesians chapter 4. All right. Read verse 22, Manny. As Kyle. I mean, Kyle. I'm in. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful love. Okay, read it again. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful love. You understand that? Sir. You understand it, don't you? Sir. Right? You got it? Don't you see what you do, what we do? We, we're, we're, it's like when we get instructions to something, you know. We look at the picture on a box and think we're smart enough to put it together without, without reading the instructions. Yeah. Yeah. The instructions there are that you take and get rid of the old man. Yeah. That's what the instructions are. Now, all right, look at verse, look at verse number 20, uh, 24. Read 24, sir. Kyle. And that he put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That you put on the new man. But you're not going to know what the new man is unless you study and find out what he is. You won't know what he is. And you think when you get before God that you can, at the, judge, at the, judge, at the judgment seat of Christ, that you're going to buffalo God and you're not going to do it. Because he's going to look at you and, you, and, he's, and you're going to try to whistle through it and he's going to say, what'd you do with me? 
All right, we'll get into that. Okay, now, okay, you got that. All right, now, look at verse 25, read 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. I don't believe we got any unsaved people in here tonight, but I got a question for you. How many of you have told a lie since you got saved? Read the verse again. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. I didn't ask you to drop your hands. I just said, asked you to read now. See, you, what you dropped it because you don't want to keep admitting it to yourself. You know what we've done? We broke what God told us to do. He said not to lie. Yeah, right. Did you confess the lie? Yeah. First John, First John one eight says, "If you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself, and the truth's not in you." We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of them, and it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. You know how you get rid of that lie? You got to confess it. Yeah. What? Well, it's just a little white lie. Yeah. Yeah. It, I don't see where it says every, everything but white lies. Yeah. <laughs> It said lie, didn't it, brother? All right, now I'm going to try a pretty good size one on for you now because I'm having fun with this. See, I'm a pastor, so I enjoy doing this kind of thing, see. All right, go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Now stop. How many people know what Hebrews 10, 25 is before we get there? Okay, we got a couple of us in here. Okay, all right, let's go to Hebrews 10, 25. Church. Yeah. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 25, uh, Kyle. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Read it again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Are you that group, the matter of some is? I hope not. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands here because we might get a liar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go ahead. But exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yeah. So as you see the day approaching, so much the more as you see the day approaching, that day's getting real close, folks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Getting real close. Now that's just two simple things. <laughs> All right, let's go back to 1 Samuel 15. Uh, the first point was the instructions. Now, you got all over the Pauline epistles, you got instructions to you and me. I mean, all over them. You got all kind of instructions. And we're, I'm not going to go into them. That's a, that's a message I'll prepare when I get home for next year. Okay, now you'll have a good time with that. All right, the next thing, verse 13. Okay, verse 13 is the lie. Now, watch the lie, okay? Watch the lie. Now, we just found out we're not supposed to lie, didn't we? Yep. All right, verse 13. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Did he? No. No, he didn't. Listen what Samuel says. Read on, brother. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Yeah. How many of you got kids, see? Right? Huh? You got kids? You know? You know, the kids always think, How did they know I did that, you know? They think they got eyes in the back of their head, Right? You know, Saul probably thought that about Samuel, but he didn't think about the bleeding of the bleeping of the sheep and the and the, and the, and the oxen and stuff. He didn't think about what was going on, the sounds around him. It's like, see, we we always think we're gonna get away with something. And my wife and I, one time, my son was here in Miami, the one that's in New York City, in Manhattan, and he's in Manhattan, and then he he works there. Oh, I'm messing you up. No, me, no. Yeah, okay. And he works in Manhattan. And he's a, I don't know, he works with Google or one of them companies and advertising and all this stuff. And uh, anyway, 
he had a, he had a thing in Miami and had a, the, he had to put on and stuff. And so he called me and Carl and asked us to come down and eat lunch with him. So we did, because it gave us a chance to get to see him. And we drove down here and he took us to lunch in some fancy place. I don't know what the name of it was, but I mean the silverware and stuff. I mean it was fancy, you know. Carl's trying to put it in the purse. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you said it at home. Uh, yeah, she will she will not put the rolling bit on my head when I get home. Have knots all over it. But no. Uh, we got through it through eating lunch and we come come back to the hotel and we're in the lobby of the hotel, they're standing there talking, we're fixing to go and he's gotta go get ready for the presentation. And the people started to come down the elevator to go to the presentation. And they see me and Carl standing there with Jeremy. And they said to Jeremy, Jeremy, is this your mom and dad? Yes, yeah, this is my mom and dad. And he introduced us to him, you know. You can tell him he's, get, he's getting nervous, you know. You can tell he's kind of getting twitchy, you know. And then one of them pops up and says, well, what does your mom and daddy do? No. You know, and he ain't saying a word. He ain't opening his mouth at all. And, and then one of them says, well, Mr. Hines, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a Baptist pastor. Jeremy's daddy's a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, I think he shrunk to the floor, man. You know why? He's living in sin. Yeah. And he got caught. Mm -hmm. See, he got caught. That's what's happened to Saul. Saul got caught. God gave him specific instructions and he didn't do it. He's wrong, yeah. and he lied about it yeah. and said that he did do it, and he didn't do it. You know what we do with God? We try to come to God when we, when we, uh, when we, when, when, when we get caught and we try to lie about the thing. Yep. And we're, we're, we get guilty of that stuff. You can't lie to God. God already knows. Amen. All right, number three, verse 15, brother. All right, number 15, verse 15, I want you to... The, the, the point is the, the, the accuser. Now watch the accuser in this, okay? Verse 15, brother. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. Am 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 For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest, the rest we have utterly destroyed. You notice how he, he said they, speaking of the people, that they they brought the sheep and the oxen and stuff, but then we we did the rest of it. He includes himself. See, but he makes it you know them in the beginning and not himself. But in the end, the, you know the, the the rest we have utterly destroyed. Uh, you know you know you know you know he was quick to take the credit. Right. You know, and there's people like that. I you know what I love about that. You get them, and you get, you'll have them in this church. You may not have them right now, but sooner or later, if you get bigger, you'll have somebody, uh, some people that don't go straight preaching, and you couldn't get them to go straight preaching if you wanted to, but they'll say this, we straight preach. Right? Amen, brother? We straight preach. No, we don't. I straight preach. You don't straight preach. See? And they try to take the credit for it. And that's what they try to do, and he's the accuser. He's accusing them when, you know, he's really, he's really the one that was supposed to be responsible. He was really the one that was told what to do and how to do it and when to do it. And it's all his responsibility. Now certain areas of this church and certain things about this church that lie strict on him. Strictly on him. And then there's areas that's not. So when it is not his responsibility alone. Yeah. That's everybody's responsibility. You know, there's some things that do lie on him. All right, 16 to 18. Now watch 16 to 18. And 16 to 18 is the remembrance. Now watch what, what's being said in 16 to 18 because it's the remembrance. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Stay on. And Samuel said, When thou wast was little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee 
on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Okay. Now, the remembrance. Okay. Let's just go through it. When, when thou wast little in thine own sight, when they was, went to anoint him king, he went and hid. He went and hid. He didn't feel like he was some big shot. There's not necessarily, it's not necessarily a great thing to be a pastor of a big church. You got the responsibilities there and things you got to watch out with the devil that you may not have when you're a pastor of a small work. You may get a big head. High, I think the word is high minded, isn't it? Yeah. High minded. You got to watch out for that stuff. Or you start winning, winning souls. Look, and nobody needs to get high minded about this young man that got saved. None of us. You know who did that? The Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Wasn't nobody in here that did that, Amen. including me. Amen. Yeah, that's all God's work. Amen. God giveth the increase. Man don't give it the increase. All right? What wasn't that? Wasn't thou? Was the? Uh, was thou not uh, made the uh, head of, of the tribe of Israel? Yeah, he sure was. Wasn't you made the pastor of Lakeside Baptist Church? Yeah, Lord, you made me that. Amen. Not me. The Lord made me that. If I'm in the right place and if Rich is in the right place, the Lord put him here. Because you don't like something he does don't make you right. He's the man of God here, not you. Okay, number three. And the, and the Lord, it doesn't matter, Saul was king. The pastor's the head of the church. I didn't say he was a dictator, I just said he's in charge. Listen, my daddy was in charge. Not my mama. And my mama would say to me when I'd get in trouble sometime, you go stand in the corner till your daddy gets home and I'm going to let your daddy deal with you. And she'd make me stand in the corner with my nose in the corner. And dad would come home and he'd say, boy, what you doing in here? Oh, dad, it's been a rough day, Pop. <laughs> Them girls have been giving it to me, man. Yeah, really. I mean, they've been giving yeah, it to me. Sisters. And he said, well, what'd you do? Well, Dad, it's not what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Well, son, you know I ain't gonna have to. I'm not gonna be able to let you get by this time." <laughs> oh, Pop, please, no, drop them pants, son. Ooh. Oh, Dad, please, no, drop them pants. And here comes that bell, whop, 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 and I'm wah, wah, wah. about whop. Okay, son, you can pull your pants up now. Yes, sir. Yeah, daddy. Okay, you can go now. Yeah, daddy. You're crying, but you know what? I needed it. Yes, sir. I needed it. That's what's wrong with America today. Yeah. They quit whipping their children. Yeah. I don't care what you think. Yeah. That book says to whip them. And who knows a person, knows, knows people better than God. He made them. Number four, and the, and the Lord, Lord, and the Lord seen, seen, uh, seen, seen thee uh, on, on a, sent thee on a journey. He told him to go kill them Malachites. He sent him on a journey. So he, you got to understand, Saul was the Lord's king. What you got to understand, the Lord, Lord sent him to go do something for him. The people wanted him king, but he's the Lord's king. Number five, God, God, go and now watch, go, go and uh, now watch it, go and utterly destroy, uh, destroy the sinners, the Amalekites. To go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites. Look at look at the next one, and fight against them until they be. What's the last word in the? Consumed. What's the word? 
Yeah. Well, what are they doing? Bringing some, bringing the king back and bringing uh, sheep back and bringing oxen back. They didn't obey the Lord, did they? Right? That's the problem. All right, number five. Number five. Look at verse 19, Kyle. Read verse 19. Okay, the next thing is, now watch, not, watch this. Watch, not, not, watch 19, the question. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice but, of the Lord? But, stop. Read the verse part. Stop it, but. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? Boy, what a question. Wherefore then did I not obey the voice of the Lord? But! There's that conjunction. Wherefore then didn't thou obey the voice of the Lord? But! Go ahead, brother. Didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. He's lying himself. You know what he did? He flew up on the spoil. The people didn't do it. He let them. And Saul and Samuel knew what he did. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. For so whatsoever a man soweth, that's, that shall he reap. You ever read about David? The, you, know what, you, know what, you know what David did? He gave a great, great occasion for the enemies, enemies of God to blaspheme. You know what God did to David? He took his son when he was born. You know what David did? David laid on his face praying and praying and praying that God wouldn't take him. And then when he saw it, heard his servants there talking and all, and he knew that, that God had done took him. He got up and got cleaned up and went and ate. Because God told him, no, I told you I'm going to take your son, and I took him. Why? God would have given David anything, but he took something he wasn't supposed to. You know what we got? We got what you know what you know what you got is an example is David, the sure mercies of David. David committed two sins that she should, he should have been killed for adultery and murder. Alright? The next one. Point six. Okay. The the half hearted uh, confession. Verse verse twenty and twenty one. Read them, Kyle. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and Gilgal. You can see right through that, can't you? You can see right through it. You're talking about half-hearted and talking about a lie. Boy, that, that's a snow. Yeah, amen, brother. That's a snowball and a half. You ever do that with God? You ever do that with God? Sure you have. We all have. You snowball him. You try to convince him. All right, verse, verse 22. And 23, brother. The last thing, the understanding. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. There's some hard stuff in that. <coughs> Let's start with the first one. Verse 22. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. To hearken than the fat of rams. Look at Hebrews thirteen fifteen. 
read that, brother. Hebrews 13, 15. thanks to his name but obedience is more than a sacrifice just obeying him just doing what he says to do yeah. being here for church when you're supposed yeah. to be here for church Amen. you're here I, I can't knock you being here okay but there be times when the devil will try to get you not to be alright look at those verses now look at the next thing there number two for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's tough, isn't it? You think that's tough? Go to Galatians chapter number six, uh, number five. Go to Galatians chapter number five. I think it's verse 20. I don't think it's in 19. I think it's in 20. You see witch, witchcraft there? Huh? Yeah, 20. Did you see witchcraft there? See it? Yeah, now look at the verse 19. Read the top of 19, Kyle. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. That's your flesh. That's a saved person. That verse wasn't written to an unsaved man. You know, you want that verse, you know what, you know what the Lord said to, to, to Saul? For, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Amen. Rebellion. When you rebel against God, I'm not going to do that. I don't care what he says, I ain't doing that. That might as well be witchcraft. I mean, I mean, man. See, sometimes we listen. Sometimes we just don't think about what we do and how he sees it. Because there's another side of the coin other than you, and you're not the most important side of the coin. He is. He created you. You didn't create him. You're the bond slave. He's not the bond slave. He bought you. You didn't buy him. That's right. All right. Number number three. Number three. Okay. Back to First uh, Samuel fifteen. Where were we? At verse what? Uh, twenty three and twenty four. Huh? Okay. Number twenty four. Stubbornness is as is is as uh, is. Uh, is is a uh, read it, brother. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Okay, is iniquity and idolatry stubbornness? Just being stubborn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted church at five o'clock. I didn't want church at six. I ain't going cause church is at six and not five. Yeah. Just being stubborn. You know what he says that is? That's iniquity. It's idolatry. As if you got down and worshipped some stinking statue. Just your stinking stubbornness. Who says I got to read my Bible cover to cover every year? Who says I have to study my Bible? I ain't studying my Bible. I ain't got time to study my Bible. Pray. I ain't got time to pray. Stubbornness. Just outright stubbornness. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
Your kids don't see you read your Bible. Your kids don't see you pray. Your kids don't see you go to church. And then when it comes time when you get you get all gung ho again, when they're about 12, 13 years old, and you tell them got to go to church, and they don't want to go. That's right. And you're pulling your teeth to try to get them in church. Yeah. And you're supposed to, you tell them they're supposed to jump when you want them to jump. You were their example. But you were stubborn. You were stubborn. I don't care what my husband says. I ain't doing it. Stubborn. You know what mama's going to do? Mama, when she is the judgment seat of Christ, she's going to answer for obeying her husband. Stubborn. That little sweet thing right there, she'll get up and go get my meal. She'll get up and go get my coffee. She'll be in the, in the little room in our house studying. She'll come in and say, honey, can I get anything for you? Sometimes she'll just come in there and say, stop for a minute. I'm going to rub you, rub you back. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. It ain't always been that way. But evidently her daddy did a good job on her. All right, I'm through with one verse. And the verse is this, is real simple. 2 Timothy 2, 12. I think I got that wrong. I think it's 3, 12. But I'm, about, uh, Kyle, read 2, 12. If I'm wrong, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. If we suffer, we yeah. shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will all, he also will deny us. You want to you want to reign? Yes, Suffer, Mama. You're not doing it for him. You're doing it for the Lord. Amen. Folks, you're not doing what you do for yourself. You're doing it for the Lord. He's worth every dime of it. Amen. You you and I we, look, we're flesh. We can't imagine it. But you just imagine. Now, I'm old now and I can't get up like I should. But can you imagine being knelt down there? Being knelt down there in front of the board. And you're knelt down here and there's a fire out there in front of you. And he puts your works in there. And you're judged by the, the motive. Why did you do what you do? What made you do what you do? Praise God. You're nailed down there and your head's down. You've seen the scars on his head. You've seen the nail prints in his hand and in his feet. And that stuff goes in that fire. And he tells you to look up and you look up. And there's gold, silver, and precious stones coming out of that fire. It will be worth it all Amen. when I see Jesus. Sing it, Mama. It will be worth it all when I see Christ. One glimpse of His grace. Come on, everybody. Throw will be raised. Because you did it right. Yeah. You believed the book. You did what the book said. Amen. You'll thank God that you did it. Amen. Amen. I'll guarantee you. Take up thy bed and walk. Amen, Amen brother. <laughs> you hear me? Yes, sir. You won't be glad that you did. Yes, that world ain't got nothing for me in you. Right. Ain't nothing in that world you need. Right. Jesus Christ did everything for us. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the joy that you've given me this week. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, You can run a lap.
that now that he'll just go that Amen, way. Amen, brother. Yeah, come, come, come this way. Come, come oh, this I way. gotta go this way. Okay. <laughs> Go to first, uh, or not first, Romans chapter 1, go to verse 8. First Romans? First Romans. Or as, as Trump said, 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, whatever he said. As a pastor, there's, there's really not a whole lot better than when some people or individuals have been around your crew. And we have visitors that we do. I think we're going on two years now being here. Amen. And as pastor, it just thrills my heart that when individuals, whether it be missionaries or pastor friends of mine, their family, Brother Brad, and they come in and, and, and they spend time with our church members. Amen. And you guys go do your thing, you go home and take your naps or whatever. But we talk, you know. I mean, we don't talk much about you. When you leave, not much. <laughs> but to sit down, drink coffee and fellowship with my brothers, and, and, and they give me that feedback about how they feel received. Amen. And I was like, wow. Because sometimes, you know, you preach or teach or try to do your best, and you're not sure. Lord, is that the right way to handle this crew? Is it, is it, is it that we're too hard on them? Sometimes my wife says, "Man, you kind of hard on them." I'll ask sometimes, "Hey, so you think that was?" Well, but as pastors and friends and yourselves as Christians, we we want the best for you, and we know sometimes it might sound like, "Wow, that's a little over the top way we handle our business." One of the main reasons is because we know that the time is very short. And the devil's the mastermind being more subtle as he does, the way he slips excuses and routines and these ruts that you're in. And you'll, you'll come in and out of a, a service like ours and not catch what just happened. And you're like, well, whatever. And you won't catch what just happened. We preach and we teach and and, and then we want you to, to, to accept or, or at least acknowledge or go check it out for yourself. If you think that, that him or I or Brother Brad or, or these fellas that I bring in or the conversations that we have amongst ourselves, Sister Carla, my wife, I mean, check it out. You check it out. Don't be lazy about it. And the idea would be to take messages like this and everything that, that we're doing in this four day, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Take what you've learned Monday and hopefully, man, you just took a little, little step closer to your Savior. Amen. And when I hear that these guys come in and out, these individuals come into Victory Baptist Church, I look at verse eight. And I can relate the way Paul frames this and says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ, amen, amen. for you all. Amen. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Now, I don't know about that per se, although we do have missionary friends that have been there and taken the experience they've had here at Victory Baptist Church over to Zimbabwe and in the Amazon and across the United States and it's always been hey bro that was a good group man you got a good thing going on there Amen. you got a good group of people a good core Amen. man you had a good spirit Amen. I came in and yeah we might have messed up some get tipped over but not everybody coming all high minded oh my oh no you can't do it like that we got it you know, you wear a tie, you know, and you know, the cat going in, and I saw. But we don't have that here. Amen. Which is a testament to you. And the, the testament that will reflect as a result of you being alone with your Savior. And we can tell. And I thank you, church. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we're going to close. 
I'm excited. I was excited. I continue to look forward to to, to see what what the Lord has for us as a church. Amen. I want you as a church to to take heed of your responsibility because we can do one of a couple of things. One, we can just stay kind of stagnant and just rest on our laurels, rest on the preaching from yesterday and say, yeah, we, 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 we preached yesterday and we talked to somebody a week ago or a month ago and said, that's pretty all, much all we need to do. No, that's not. His mercies are renewed, I think it's every day, right? Morning by morning. And every day you have another day to get closer to Jesus Christ and that would be what what we'd want as a church as we close tonight so thank you church Amen. Amen. keep on keeping on stay encouraged man we got this Amen. we're gonna ride this thing out together and and thank God we have friends like Lakeside Baptist Church to come in and minister to us like this so we'll close and please make sure you you see these young people here and thank them for coming out and uh, thank you ladies for food oh, help the take care of business we come in plug in and everything just started going right and I, I don't see one one thing that I would say that man we really blew that because I, I, didn't, I didn't see it Lord thank you again for Jesus Christ and thank you for the victory and thank you for these people here that 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 are down here in Homestead, Florida, with the opportunity to be a part of a Bible-believing ministry that's yes. sadly very, very rare these days, and few there's few there's few and far in between, far between. Next Bible-believing ministry that I'm aware of will be in Pahokee, Florida, and Lord, so that means it's just that much that's much more important to stay faithful in those things that you've called us to do and to be. And Lord, I pray for Brother Ted, Sister Carla, Brother Brad, Brother Ed as he comes back down. And Lord, however it is, they, they plan on getting back up to Pahokee. And Lord, I pray you would, you, would, you, would, you would allow them to bring their experience of being here with, with this group back to, to Pahokee and know that we appreciated their fellowship. And so we love and thank you, Lord. We plead the blood. We pray for a good trip back home tonight. Pray that you keep a head of protection about everybody here keep them encouraged Lord and help us be found faithful until you come in Jesus name Amen, Amen. 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 you did it